Hello and welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of the Brian Manifesto, brought to you by the Ecclesian House. This is Pastor Bill, and over the next 10 minutes or so, we are going to follow up on Season 2, Episode 2, asking the question, is there such a thing as righteous anger? First things first, in the last episode, I asked if the words for anger and wrath in Ephesians 4.31, that we are advised to be put away or removed from us, were the same words for anger and wrath used in Ephesians 4.26. And we never actually answered the question, so that's where we actually are right now. In the latter case, we find Paul telling us that it's okay to be provoked to anger there in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, but not to let the sun go down on our wrath, because the devil would love to use any opportunity to separate us from each other. We talked about in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, Paul using the words orgizo for angry, it's to provoke or enrage, uh, to become exasperated, and perorgismos, which is rage. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, for anger and wrath, we find the words orgy for anger, it's desire, violent passion, uh, punishment, and the word thumos for wrath, it is passion, as if breathing hard, fierceness, indignation, and wrath. So, did Paul use the same words in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, for anger and wrath, as in chapter 4, uh, verse 31? And I know that's a really tangled web to listen to on a podcast and follow along. So, the answer is yes and no. In the case of anger, the word used in verse 26 does find its origins in the word for anger used in verse 31. They are, in essence, the same word. In the case of wrath, in verse 26, it's a different word than the word used in verse 31. Now, both of these words, when translated into English, can be translated as wrath. But in verse 26, the word rage better communicates the message being delivered in modern English. Don't let the sun go down on your rage. There is definitely a difference between your run-of-the-mill anger, being upset, being provoked, um, and rage, you know, blood pressure raised, hands shaking, singularly focused emotion. There's a difference. So let's pivot now and dive into this episode's topic. Is there such a thing as righteous anger? And it's really a natural progression from where we are in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, since the discussion about righteous anger usually starts at this verse, or at least at the beginning of this verse, the be angry and do not sin part, right? Uh, the thinking there is, well, if I can be angry and sin, then I can also be angry and not sin. And that somehow excuses the anger is, is the thinking that that's the explanation for how you can have righteous anger. However, when we read the verse, we see that there are actually two sentences here in this verse. The be angry and do not sin, it's not a complete statement really by itself. There's more to the statement. And that second sentence that starts in that verse continues on into verse 27. The whole sentence reads, don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't give the devil an opportunity. So I'm completely fine with your holding to the assertion that there is such a thing as righteous anger and that it isn't bad or a sin based solely off of this statement. I'm fine with that. That is, if you're willing to accept the obvious conclusion of the continuation of the statement that's being made by Paul here, that all anger 
even what you've dubbed righteous anger, opens the door and gives the devil opportunity in your life and the church body as a whole. Let's take a look at another verse so that we have more perspective. James chapter 1 verse 20 says, For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. We talked about full statements. Now, this is the takeaway from verse 19. It's the end of a statement. And verse 19 reads, My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And we'll read it again just for the sake of audio. Verse 20, For human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. I like my favorite theologian's take on this scripture, Matthew Henry. He wrote, It is as if the apostle had said, Whereas men often pretend zeal for God and his glory in their heat and passion, let them know that God needs not the passions of any man. His cause is better served by mildness and meekness than by wrath and fury. Those who pretend to serve the cause of God with wrath hereby show that they are acquainted neither with God or his cause. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 17, Solomon wrote, The calm words of the wise are heeded more than the shouts of a ruler over fools. I came across a bit of commentary on this verse from the 16th century by a man named George Buchanan. Buchanan was a world-renowned writer who was exiled from Scotland and petitioned Henry VIII for protection. He wrote, In quiet times, in the hours of retirement and reflection, when the distractions of the world are shut out, the words of wisdom come back into the mind and sink into the heart. That, my friends, is where we want our message to resonate. Let's look at that again, Ecclesiastes 9, 17. The calm words of the wise are heeded more than the shouts of a ruler over fools. In those quiet times, we want those wise words to come back up. We want the gospel that we live and preach to reach people in those quiet times. In those moments when people are lying in bed at the end of a rough day. In those times when they can hear that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit beckoning them to come. That's where we want those wise words to have effect. We can yell and scream and have bullhorns and signs and and all of these uh, things to try to drive a hard message home. But ultimately, that's the Holy Spirit's job. And we find the Scripture advising us that it's our wise, calm words that will then be used to do the work of the Lord in others' lives. So, is there such a thing as righteous anger. In a perfect world, there isn't. That's not a thing. In the world we live in, we know from the last episode that it's okay to be provoked to anger. We're all human, right? We also know that we have to deal with the effects of that anger on us so that we aren't overcome with rage and so we don't carry that mess into the next day with us. It's when we hold on to that rage and wrath that we give the enemy a foothold into our lives and into the church. So, yes, you can be provoked to anger by an injustice. And that anger would technically be categorized as righteous anger. However... What you choose to do with that anger once it's there will either invalidate that righteousness or change that anger into forward positive momentum. The choice of which is yours. 
And it will be easier to do if you've heeded the concept we talked about in that last episode. If you've pulled up that anchor and created some grace for yourself. This is Pastor Bill saying, until next time.